Okay, so nevertheless, proper the word helps with uh, nuance and contrast. So let's go over this. First off, let's go over some synonyms. There are a lot of synonyms for nevertheless. <coughs> In spite of. However. In spite of that. In spite of everything, nonetheless, even so, however, but still, yet, though, be as it may, Rather be that as it may, for all that, despite that, despite everything, after everything, having said that, That said, just the same, all the same, at the same time, in any event, come what may, at any rate. Standing regardless anyway. Anyway. Okay. A lot of synonyms. We're gonna go over nevertheless. We might go over a few of these synonyms, but I don't want to go over all of them in this video. Um so let's go over nevertheless. So um you could say You know, it, it it was an old movie from you know Turner Turner Classics. I don't like using it. So you could say, you know, we we saw last night. I want to be as specific as possible, at least to create some specificity. Last night we. We watched an old movie from Turner Classics. Or you could say, yeah, an old movie. So right here, uh, you could just say a movie from Turner Classics, and then you could say something like, you know, although it was old and in black and white, blah, 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 blah. But what I like saying, so let's just get rid of these. What I like saying, so is, is I like using this adjective in old movie, and then adding to that by creating a more specific sort of um, picture, right? So old movie, it makes the reader think, oh, what what does that mean, old movie? And then then we want to point at that. So we'll say, you know, um, you know, it it was in black and white. You know, it was made in the 1930s, was in black and white, and had no foul language or um, overt uh, sex uh, featured. Right, so we've got an old movie, and then we go over all the details 
that further specify what old means, right? What what that means. So that that helps the reader, right? It helps the reader follow along. It sort of answers the obvious question. The obvious question is going to be, oh, well, what does that mean, old? You know, like was it like um, a silent movie, like way back in the day? You know, um, in which case it would have been definitely before before the 1930s. Um, so, you know, and then um, how old was it? Was it like the 80s? Because the 80s was in color. So we're saying, oh, it was in the 30s. It was in black and white and had no foul language or overt sex feature. So we know that it was a sound movie. It was, it was, it was after sound came into the pictures, the, the talkies as they call them. Um, it was in black and white, right? But it, and it had no foul language or overt sex featured. So it's like all these things that, whereas a lot of people might be thinking, oh, well, with all of those things, that's kind of, those are, those are negatives. Those, those could be considered uh, negatives. Um, but let's, let's twist it. That's why I like using nevertheless. Nevertheless, you can actually change, you can actually use although. You know, although it was made in the 1930s, was in black and white and had no link, foul language or over sex featured. Nevertheless, you know, I thought that um, it was even more enjoyable than a lot of contemporary films because. You know, because um, the lot the, the dialogue was um, you could say something like the dialogue was even more elevated, or you could say something like because um, because there was a lot of. There was, I don't like saying a lot too much in, in my writing. You could say something like there was, um, you know, exemplary or excellent. You could say excellent. There was excellent use of um, innuendo and uh, nuance in the dialogue. And the um, the mise en scène is the stuff that's on on screen, and the mise en scène um, which so then ideally you want to sort of conclude this as being very specific. So if we just had this, like, what does this mean? What is the obvious question that the reader's gonna ask? Well, the reader's gonna ask, you know, what do you mean you know, like excellent use of innuendo and this whole rest of the sentence. Like, like, what does that mean? What does that mean? So you could say, which, um, which was required at the time to which was required at the time. Which were because it's the use of blank and blank. So the use of innuendo and nuance in the dialogue on the mise en scène, which actually the use of would be was the use of this was required at the time, right? You could say so. That's why you want to say the use of blank is required. So it doesn't necessarily matter how many. 
are in here, you know, A, B, and C. And this is how you generally want to think about this stuff too, is, is you want to break, you want to split the sentence and then you see if it's going to be is or are. So the use of A, comma, B, comma, and C is required. The use is required. Plus you could also get rid of this. So if you can omit this completely and it still makes sense, that's how you know you're using that verb right. So the use is required. Right? So the use of A, B, and C is required. All right. So it's going to be is required, which was required, is or was. As opposed to were. In order to hint at in order to imply now here I don't want to say foul language or sex right because you don't want to be repetitive so we want to be creative so what's another word for foul language in order to imply um, you know uh, verbal you know expletives right so you're basically you're just repeating You're just repeating this. And then repeating this, but you're putting it in, in, di in different words. So that's generally what is uh, ideal. Expletives. And uh, so what's overt sex and, um, and, uh, and coital activities, or you could say coitus, or you could say, and um, you know, I think lovemaking sounds a little bit weird. A lot of it too is you, you kind of hear it and you, and you keep in mind the venue, right? You always want to keep in mind, like, where are you writing this? Keep in mind the venue. And that will help with picking the proper words that you want to use. Um, you know, verbal expletives and coital activities. Um, you could say, or you could say, um, nudity yeah because you also want to use and why it was like yeah it was because i you know it, it's it becomes so obvious right you, and this has to do with keeping in mind the venue so so like what are the common words and phrases used in that venue right so when you're thinking about the movie world or the pop culture world right like how, how do people talk about pop culture and and, and movies well, you know, if it was if it was film class, right? You do know what mise en scène means. That's one of the things that one of the the terms, the filmic terms. You know, in uh, literary terms, you have allegory and simile and metaphor and stuff. Well, in the film world, you have mise en scène. You have you have these 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 words and phrases that make sense in that in that in that milieu. Oh, that that's another one is milieu. You know, which is like the world. You know that that specific world, um, you know, or environment, and that's just common in that. In you know, so when you're talking about that mise en scène milieu, you could say you know actor, you could say you know thespian, right, which is also an actor, and and, and that's that doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. It's it's you know you you, you would call Glenn Close an actor, right? Not just an actress, but she, she's an actor it's it's not gender specific and it doesn't isolate you know so when you're writing like a sentence or an essay or whatnot it's talking about films or even a movie review for example or even if it's a narrative but you're, you're covering the film world it's cool to use the same type of language that is used i mean like y you if you wanted to you could mention actress but that's only if you're discussing you know questions of gender or you know you're designating that as a differentiator for a reason in, in my opinion in my opinion um because um you know but normally like whenever i wrote essay if, if i wrote an essay for example for a film class um 
I would just refer to, you know, the actor as an actor or a, th a, th a thespian. But the other thing you could say is, you know, so in terms of sex, what does it always say? It's like nudity, right? Because you've seen that. You've seen that, you know, on, um, you know, we used to have this thing years ago. What was it called? It was called the TV Guide. I think some of you guys remember this. But yeah, it would always say like, um, you know, no nudity or some nudity or brief nude, nude nudity, etc. Like BN, I think HBO had that. Um, like these these uh, these premium cable stations back in the day. I mean, I'm sure they still have that as well. But I mean, just even like way back in the day, just how the language the language that was used to communicate that to the audience um, in terms of all this other material. Um, you want to use the same language, right? Cause, cause they can connect with it. So yeah. So you're not going to want to say, you know, coitus, you know, coital activity, um, you know, love making. like you don't want to say any of that because it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit with like the language, the, the jargon that you've seen, you know, and that's why I was like, oh, okay, that's a perfect word. So yeah. So it's, it's expletives, you know, the, the verbal expletives. So like curse words and um and nude, nude, nudity see so, you know so when you make when you make that choice you're going to get excited because you're going to say oh that's the right word like you're just going to know it because you, you're thinking about making sure that you pick the proper words that come up in this in this environment in this milieu so hopefully that's a little bit helpful um so yeah so let's let's check this out let's see how it looks Last night, we watched an old movie from Turner Classic Movies. Although it was made in the 1930s, it was uh, was in black and white and had no foul language or overt sex featured. Nevertheless, I thought that it was even more enjoyable than a lot of contemporary films because we're answering this question. Um, there was an excellent... Well, actually, we're not answering it yet. There was an excellent use of innuendo and the mise en scène, which was required. So, so here, from here on, we're answering this question. Um, that the the reader, the obvious question, right? You you want to you want to answer the obvious questions that the reader might ask. That is huge for like quality writing. It's, it's just paramount. So because we're actually using the nuance in the dialogue and the mise-en-scene, right, which is also using the jargon that you use in, in the film world, which was required at the time in order to imply verbal expletives and nudity. Um, you also might want to break the sentence up and sort of develop it more. You know, this was required at the time, blah, 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 blah. So but I think this is... I think this is good. Um, rather than um, so so if I if I switch if I punched in like like rather than you know explicitly show them. You know, first of all, I don't like using too many pronouns if I don't have to. Um, there's just certain words that, like, I think it just, we like, weakens the sentence and, like, weakens that block of sentences, for example. And I think that, you know, using these these pronouns sometimes can get a little bit onerous. Plus, this is sort of, I think it's kind of interesting because if we can end with this at the end of the sentence, I think it might be better to put imply, you know, so you could say imply, and here's where you might want to use a parenthesis. You want to say something like, as opposed to explicitly display. This is uh, this way you don't have to use the pronoun them because you're putting it within the body of a sentence. So you could say, last night we watched an old movie from Turner Classics. Although it was made in the 1930s, it was in black and white, and now had no foul language or sex, over sex featured. Nevertheless, I thought that it was even more enjoyable than a lot of contemporary films because there was excellent use of innuendo and nuance in the dialogue. And the me in um, now here I would put both because you because you have two things: you have use of innuendo 
and you have use and nuance. So there's two things now. You have innuendo and nuance, right? Um, which is kind of the same thing, but not exactly the same thing. Like innuendo, I look at, they're, they're related. They're related. So you, you, you know, a writer might put innuendo slash nuance, um, but I think it's, it fits because I think they're slightly different or, or they could be considered slightly different. Um, I th also think of innuendo as like jokes. You know, it's like, it's like if you, um, it's like if you have sort of layered jokes that are sexual in nature, but aren't, but don't, don't, don't make it overt sexuality, you know, make an overt sexuality display on the screen, that's innuendo, right? So it's an effective use of innuendo. And since we're talking about sex, like overt sex, etc., I think that the word innuendo fits. But then you talk about nuance, and you're like, okay, well, nuance, um, it might, it might be talking about, you know, the foul language, because when I think of innuendo, I usually think of sexual innuendo when you're talking about pop culture and all this and this and that. And, you know, what's the common dialogue, right? You want to you wanna sort of, um, you know, keep in mind the common dialogue, you know, that's, that's you know, that's out there. And, and, uh, and that's, you know, um, in this field, etc. I mean, you know, you, you want to add to the... You want to add to the conversation, right? You want to add to the convo, right? So I think it fits. But And then also in the dialogue and the mise-en-scene, we have innuendo, nuance. So I like putting both in both the dialogue and the mise-en-scene, which is what's whatever's in front of the camera, right? The mise-en-scene is whatever's in front of the camera. So, And, and we're going to go over a few of these, <clears throat> but uh, I want to go, because they're synonyms, but I want to go over nevertheless which was required at the time in order to imply, as opposed to explicitly display, verbal expletives and nudity. Now, could you delete expletives? I guess you could. To imply expletives and nudity. I don't know, I just like, I like uh, the, uh, the word verbal, because it's verbal expletives, which has to do with foul language. <clears throat> so that's a very clear, sort of replacement, right? Foul language, verbal expletives. And then over sex is nudity. Um, so you could say, yeah, that's basically it. Um, so you could say more over, you could, you could say sexuality, but I think it's more over sex. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, I also don't, I don't want to say explicit sex featured. Like, how come we, we don't want to say explicit? Exactly, because we use it here. Yeah, so you want to, you know. Um, so you, you could change, <clears throat> you know. Um, yeah, so we, we could change. change this so you could say overt right? or overt sex featured had no foul language or overt sex featured actually I don't know I think it sounds better explicitly and then overtly so again this is this is what I do this is this is how I write this stuff I've and I think a lot of people sort of think in so similar ways that are sort of active in terms of trying to make their writing like really high quality is, you know, you just, you think about words, you're like, okay, well, this word is a synonym for this and let me replace what sounds better. Like, cause if I said overt, overtly, it looks a little, a little bit odd, right? It's like, there's an or, and then it's over, over, like it just, it's, it's about flow and it's, it's it might not seem like a big deal, because you just want to get it done, and I understand that. But, you know, if you really, really want to have quality writing and just, you know, being as thoughtful with your writing as you are, maybe with, with some other stuff. And obviously, the more you read, the more you write, you're going to get much faster. So it's not going to take as long. It's just like anything, right? It's like programming, um, you know, like um, programming computers and stuff. It's like anything that, you know, anything that that, that the specialist, right? Um, um, they, there was like a famous study on 
on experts, these people that are their top successes in their field. And, <clears throat> you know, what's the secret? Well, the magic formula is 10,000 hours. It takes 10,000 hours to be great at something, to be a brilliant scientist or a, a you know, phenomenal top, top tier athlete or a basketball player or, you know, or it could be a teacher or it could be, you know, um, a shipbuilder. I mean, it could, could be anything, but it's like, it just, it takes time. It takes a lot of time. So I think, you know, if you take the same sort of effort and approach with, with writing, I think you'll be, you'll be pretty pleased at, at, at how, how your writing improves. So, all right. So last night we watched a movie. We watched, why did I have that? We watched an old movie from Turner Classics. Of those made in the 1930s, when it's black and white, and the film was just for explicitly, explicitly, or explicit sex featured. Nevertheless, so we could say, nevertheless, I thought it was, never the, comma, nevertheless, I thought it, that it was even more enjoyable. I think this is, I think this could, you could go either way on this. I think if, nevertheless, was the beginning of the sentence normally you want to put a comma but since it's it's in the body of the sentence and you've got you know although in there i don't think it's required um nevertheless i thought it, that it was even more enjoyable than a lot of contemporary films because it was excellent just made you want to both the dialogue and the mise-en-scene which was required at the time in order to imply as opposed to overtly display verbal expletives and, and nudity and then and then the last thing i'll go over on this and before i go over a few of these synonyms is what is the next obvious question the reader might ask? What's the movie called? <laughs> so we want to answer it. You know, we want to answer that next. So the next sentence is going to have something to do with you know, um, you know, you know, all about Eve. You know, was you know made was, uh, you know, directed by, you know, blah, 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 Ernst uh, uh, Lubitsch, um, Billy Wilder, you know. But yeah, all, you know, and then, then you go into it, you know, uh, was made, you know, um, re you know, released in 1932, for example. You know, because you're, so here, it's, you're being a little bit vague, made in, in the 30s, and then you specify that here. Then that then that's when you so you sort of save that you save that in, in information because if also if if you say if you said if although it was made in 1932 that's fine but then you have to, to, to take out that here so I think it might actually fit if we say made in the 30s because normally when you talk about film when you're talking about film a lot of times you're talking about the decade oh yeah those movies in the 90s oh yeah like music in the 80s was great music in the 70s so just the common discourse the common dialogue. When it comes to pop culture, a lot of times it's the decades, right? So we want to we want to have you should kind of want to keep that in mind. So, so you say something that's kind of general, the '30s, which adds to the adds to the common dialogue that, that that's out there. And then here is where you you know you sort of get even more specific, right? Because you said an old movie, so you're like unpeeling the the onion, you know. So that's kind of of uh, of uh, has has uh, there's. It definitely increases the quality of your writing, I think. And I think, yeah, I think that this is a, yeah, this, I think this is a good use of nonetheless. And it basically means, you know, however, in spite of that, you know. Um, so let's, let's do a few more here. Let's. So now. This is a little bit of a long few sentences, but sometimes it, it bees like that. So you could say now if you if you if you just change this to however, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit, guys. This is this is a run on. I see this a lot, um, and um, but it it it's all right. I mean, it's it's you just have to remember that if you're going to use however, um, you know, if you're going to use however, you're not going to use although. You're going to um as one sentence, right? All you all you're going to say is. Um, it was made. It was made in the 1930s. It was in black and white and no foul language or sex featured. You know, and then colon, however, comma, I thought, or you could do period, however, comma, I thought.
So I think that's excellent. I think that that, that works well. And that they're they're synonyms, right? They're, they're basically synonyms, but you can't use them exactly the same way. Now, some of these words like these phrases, be that as it may, I think that's a little bit conversational. I don't think it's properly formal, you know, as my first choice for, for you know, maybe sort of more f formal writing environments. Um, for all that, also, I, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, I don't think I've used that much. Um, uh, after everything, I'm not a huge fan. Despite everything, I'm not a huge fan, at least in this context. I mean, you, you could use it if you're telling like a funny story and it's like two characters talking or you're, you know, there's a lot of dialogue and stuff and, and there's like this long sort of hilarious story and there's disaster and it's like, despite everything, we're still friends, you know, even though, you know, so, um, and then also like that said, you know, or having said that, uh, why does having said that or that said not, why is that not ideal here? Because we're not talking, we're writing, right? Like the, this, this fits if you're talking, but not, 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 not if you're doing some formal writing, because it's it's not clear. Because you're saying, oh, are you are you saying it or are you writing it? So, um, so some of this stuff I don't really like. Just the same, all the same. I'm not really a huge fan at the same time. But I do, I do respect. Uh, I do like regardless. Um, do like regardless. So let's use regardless. Okay, last night we watched an old movie from Turner Classics. Although it was made in the 1930s, it was in black and white, and had no foul language or explicit sex featured. Regardless, I thought that it was, it was even more enjoyable than a lot of contemporary films because there was excess of contemporaries uh, modern day. There's an excellent use of innuendo and nuance in both the dialogue and the mise-en-scene, which was required in order to imply, as opposed to overtly display, verbal expletives and nudity. And and notice that we're using... So, so everything is structured. So you're like, foul language is first, sex is second. Right? Innuendo is... So let's put innuendo second, because that usually fits in with uh, with sex. So nuance sort of is what you would use when you're talking about foul language. So they're using like nuanced words, right? And like nuanced dialogue choice. And then that, and that's first, right? And then innuendo is second, which is sex. So you're structuring it the same way. Also dialogue, what's dialogue? That's foul language, that's foul language. So that's first here. And then the mise-en-scene, what's mise-en-scene? It's what's on the screen. So what's on the screen is there's no explicit sex feature. There's no, like, you know, um, visually, you know, it's it's the mise-en-scene. And then, and then again here, we refer to it here. It's structured the same way. Verbal expletives, foul language. Remember, we're replacing that, those, uh, the phrases, and just keeping it colorful because you don't want to be repetitive. You don't want to say imply foul language and explicit sex again. That's a huge, huge mistake. So all you want to do is um, you want to replace the words and you want to use the appropriate words that would fit in that, in that context. So hopefully this is helpful, um, uh, to you, you know, um, using nevertheless, we did cover however, and regardless as well, although those will have separate videos. Um, but hopefully this was helpful. Thank you very much.